How's it going everybody? I'm Slavin Torsky and welcome to the channel. And today you might be asking what is up with this cardboard box sitting here? Well, I managed to get myself one of those bug out bag Smith & Wesson M&P shield combos that they have online. So this is the package that actually came shipped in, but it's one of those situations where it's a box and a box and a bag and a box. So we'll get into that shortly. But if you do like firearms reviews, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We keep something coming out every week for everybody's tastes and viewing pleasure. And anything you find informational or entertaining, go ahead and give us a like if you can, because that is much, much appreciated. And of course, any comments you have, questions, anything like that, toss that down in the comments section and we'll get to you there. And we like to have a good conversation, learn and such down there. All right, so what is in the box? It's just a regular old cardboard box. And once you open it up, here is the contents. So, they give you a nice M&P bug out bag. It's really cool. Let's get that out of the way. That's just a spacer. And then you get the box with the pistol itself. And you get some free foam. That's all that's in this box, so let me get that out of the way. All right, so that's the pistol, and this is the bag. It's a pretty nice bag, kind of looks like a uh, shoulder bag, sort of, not quite a purse, maybe a man purse. <laughs> uh, could be used like a waist purse, I guess, but it looks more like throw it over your shoulder and bug the crap out. So, let's see if there's anything inside. You have some nice room here. Uh, this is for magazines. You have three spots for mags. You have what looks like a pistol holder in there. Yeah, I think that's where you actually hold the pistol and the mags on the top portion. The front, here you have some holders. Looks like shotgun shell holders almost. Nice open little pouch there. A water canteen this is what this looks like to me holder on the side. Velcro holds all of that together. Not bad on this side. Looks like maybe a flashlight holder. Not bad at all. So let's flip this up. We have another pouch on the inside here. Uh, nothing special about the pouch. It's expandable a little bit. So that was underneath there. So, decent area to put stuff. Then up on top open up the main pouch. You have a velcro spot here if you want to put any sort of patches, things like that. In the main compartment you get this. You have a lot of stuff. Three magazines and a Smith & Wesson branded face mask. Because you know we need those a lot these days. The inner pouch. Here's your magazine straps. For your three magazines you have a little netted pouch on the inside there and a decent amount of space so that is the bag itself that's your face mask the magazines are eight round magazines all metal construction so very nice inside of here is a first aid kit 
that's all that's in the box. So let's see what's in the first aid kit you get. All right. See what I mean by bags and bags and boxes and bags? All right, so you just have some bandages, dressings, you have burn cream. Uh, let me get inside of there. Burn cream, AAA ointment, aspirin, the basics. If you fall down or get a small burn, something along those lines. Had a whole job for a couple hours. And the dressings is multiple types of band-aids. Nothing crazy special. Seal that up. If I don't seal it up now, I'll forget to seal it up after. Then tons of alcohol prep pads, it looks like. Moist towelettes. Yeah. So we get the, the towelettes here. Saturated with benzalkonium chloride. And on this end, there are sting relief prep pads. So if you get stung by a bug or something while you're out and about, you get a bunch of those in there as well. So that's it as far as the goodies that are in the actual plug out bag. So kind of cool, nice basic little features. So let's see what you get in the actual box. So here's everything on there. This is the M&P 9 Shield. This is their combo pack, little compact version. So this is what it looks like when you open the actual box itself. On this end, I like that they have this pistol sealed in this plastic. There's another magazine inside the firearm. It is clear. But that's the firearm itself. Nice little compact thing. Thin. Very thin, actually, so that would be super easy to conceal. And then, for the rest of the stuff in the box, you have the paperwork. So there's a firearms warning, registration, and the book, which is kind of like pamphlet form. Red and black ink, full diagrams and pictures on everything. Very nice book. In a little hidden compartment here, you have yet another mag, as well as a lockdown cable lock. There's something else rattling around there. Yeah. Just the uh, chamber flag. So that's everything that you get inside of the box. So that's a grand total of five magazines that you get. Looks like uh, one is a seven rounder. Everything else is an eight rounder. So that's the eight round magazine. And this is the seven round magazine. So I'm gonna get everything cleared off here and clean up my mess and I'll be right back. All right, uh, first off, I wanna apologize for the background noise. It is extremely hot in here and the fan's running really loud. So I did try to get it as quiet as possible. So hopefully that doesn't bother anyone here. All right, so let's get a nice close look at the pistol. First off, drop the mag. And we are safe, nothing going on there. Let's get a real close up look. You'll see it's still a little dirty from packaging, but we'll clean it up in a minute and show you how all that works small little pistol you see fits in the palm of my hand not a bad thing at all but all in all not a bad pistol especially if you're looking for something to just be a concealed carry option so like the normal let's go ahead and go through the features start on the left side of the pistol all right so you do have a manual frame mounted safety that is not ambidextrous. So, right now, I pull the trigger. You can activate it. It stops the trigger from moving. Let's see, can you, you could still rack the slide while that's, while the safety is engaged. So all it does is disable the trigger. So that's nice. You still have the functionality of everything up top while the trigger is, in, or the manual safety is engaged. You have a slide catch, a slide stop right here whatever you like to call it. 
it is very, very stiff. You see me, my hand kind of shaking a little bit for that. So I would just rack it again in order to get the slide to come off of that slide catch. You have the takedown lever on this side, very easy to get to. The grip is kind of a gravelly looking grip. It really does look like a rock. So I do like that. It's on the back and the front. And you'll notice it comes up here as well a little bit. So where that finger groove is cut out, you actually have a nice grippy texture right there. Uh, front of the trigger guard is smooth. You have a two-piece trigger. So how that works is basically if something touches the top of your trigger, it will not actually engage the trigger. But when you push down the lower piece of the two-piece trigger, it will allow you to pull it. Magazine release is on this side. When you push it, it does push out the far side a little. So if you're not careful, you might have your finger in the way of that, but I've never actually run into that myself. I've just seen other people have that issue. But it also has that gravelly texture on it. You have slide serrations on the back. The nice wavy ones that Smith & Wesson likes to do, kind of their fish scale. That makes it very easy to get a hold of it. There are none on the front, so doing a press check is going to be difficult. But you can peek right down this hole and see if there are any rounds in the chamber. So nice. There is not a rail on the front, so no optics or lasers, but I believe you can purchase something that will put a rail here. And I think they have some optics and lasers that you can put here instead that are purposely made for this firearm since there is no rail. Take a look at the barrel. Good looking barrel, everything's nice and flush in the front. Your sights are very large, three dot sights. And again, I apologize for my hands being so dirty. I've been cleaning a lot of firearms today. So you do have a nice cutout and there are serrations on the back here to cut on glare. You have your back plate right here. They also put texture on there to give it a nice look. And it will, uh, that will come in handy later when you go to disassemble. On the right side of the firearm, you see it's not ambidextrous, but you can switch the, actually, uh, I, I do not believe, yeah, I don't think you can actually switch that magazine release to the right side, so I think this is just made for a righty. But you'll see that the writing is not overly gaudy. Not bad. So, good looking firearm in general. Take a look at the top, very plain on the top, so you might have glare issues there, but I doubt, honestly, I've never really had so many glare issues, even with a stainless steel firearm. But all in all, kind of simple, but a very good option for concealed carry. And again, we'll take a look at the magazines too. I like these because these are metal magazines. Very, very nice. They have the Smith Wesson logo, they have around counters, 9mm. Very well made magazines. The flush mag fits in very well. And when you push the ejector, it fires that magazine out of there. So let's take a look at the eight round extended mag. Also fits in very well, even around the little extension on the bottom. So there's a little rattle when the mag's in there, but that's okay. It's not coming out of there. And even with those, oops. Actually, it does not eject those the way it does the other one. So let me try that again. So it ejects the seven round magazine. Let me try another one. So it ejected that one. Something about this magazine, it's actually not liking to eject like the others. All right, so let's see what the difference is. Yeah difference is the top it looks like. Every other magazine has the top all the way out so let's see what we can figure out the deal is going on there. Luckily I have my toolbox somewhere. Oh, this is a pen. Okay so I might have to take apart that magazine and figure out what is holding it back from going all the way up. So we'll have that noted. That one magazine is a little weird when it comes to the ejection. 
so we'll go to another one. All right, so when it's a normal magazine, it does eject that out very, very well. And when you have the extended magazine in there, you have a good solid grip on it. So no complaints on that at all. Now let's take a look at the trigger. I'm going to go to the other side of the camera so you can actually see. All right, so it's charged, ready to go. Here is the trigger. You hit a wall right here, so there's not much take up for you hit a wall. Brakes. Check the reset. It resets pretty much exactly where it breaks. Yeah, it resets exactly where it breaks. That is a very good trigger. Now it is a little ways out, so it's not like some where it's, you know, the trigger breaks way back here. It breaks right up front and it resets way up front. One more time for three times sake. So not bad, I do really, really like that trigger. Okay, now one thing I wanted to show, since I went ahead, I was gonna do this off camera, but I decided it would be best to do it on camera, is that magazine we're having the issue with on the top there. Just remember, it's supposed to look like that. I was gonna take it apart and take a look. So, I'm gonna show you how you do that. Uh, this little sleeve, you can actually pull up, and I just take a pen, nothing special. And there's a little button right here. Push the pen in on that button. Push the bottom of the magazine forward. Keep your thumb where this thumb is, keep it there, watch. See how that tried to shoot out on me? And it just did, because I pulled it off to the side. That is an issue you can run into. Now, we're gonna take a look in there and see what's going on with this magazine. Here's the base plate. All right, so I got the magazine out. Got the follower out. I don't see any issues. Looks like the spring is nice and taut. So let's try putting this back together and see if maybe it just needed to be taken apart and wiggled around or something. And you will see on here that it goes back together a certain way. So you'll have one side of the spring is much larger than the other. The small side goes on here. Fits like that. It fits like that as I make it fall away. Now let's make sure nine millimeter like that. So we want to be able to read it from this side. So it angles the same way as the magazine. Spring angles the other way. All right, that's coming all the way up now. Now the hard part is getting this thing all the way back in. Now you'll notice this base plate has two little notches on it, so you can do that with them. And remember, you want that button sticking out, so put that on top, push that all the way down, and hold that in. Then you're going to slide the base plate back on. There we go. Looks like it's back on correctly. Let me double check, give it a couple pushes. All right, and the magazine is now fixed. True test. All right, that's all it took to fix the magazine. So you see that couple minutes, magazine corrected. All right, so we've come to the portion of the video where we go ahead and weigh everything so you know what you're looking at if you do want to carry this firearm. Now I went ahead and loaded up two of the magazines using the Maglula loader. I can't uh, review on this is pending. I'll have that coming out soon, but I'll, spoiler alert, so far I like it. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on our scale. Nothing inside the firearm. We're good to go there. All right, so weight of an unloaded firearm here. And again, I know I don't keep saying that enough, but this is the M&P 9 Shield. It's their compact. 
So unloaded, we're looking at one pound, 2.3 ounces. Uh, an empty magazine, just for the heck of it, is 2.4 ounces. But I'm gonna go ahead and weigh these mags so you know what you're looking at. This is the seven rounder. Seven round magazine is five ounces, exact, completely full. Eight round magazine is 5.9 ounces, completely full. So that gives you an idea if you needed to carry spare magazines, how much weight you're looking at putting on your belt line or wherever you carry. So the weight of the firearm with the seven round mag is one pound, 7.4 ounces. The weight of the firearm with the eight round mag is one pound, 8.2 ounces. So you kind of have an idea what you're looking at there if you do want to carry this firearm on you. All right, so next up, let me turn on my light here. Next up, we're going to go ahead and show you how to take this down in order to get in there and clean the actual firearm. And that little red piece keeps bothering me if you can't tell. I think it's a little piece of plastic or something. But uh, we'll show you how to take this apart in order to get inside, clean out all the guts and everything if you bring it to the range. Or if you carry these for a while, there's going to be a lot of dead skin cells, lint, and dust that gets in there. You're going to want to make sure to clean that out too. All right, so first step, as always, make sure that the firearm does not have the magazine in it and that there are no rounds in the chamber. All right, so now, next step, you're going to want to pull the slide back and lock it with the slide lock. Now right here, you'll see that there is a lever. You're going to rotate that lever down. It's very tight if you can't tell. Let's rotate that down. All right, when that's rotated down, you can release the slide catch here. And the firearm will not come off until you pull the trigger. So this is one of the models where you do have to pull the trigger to pull the two pieces apart. So here's the lower. See how the guts work in there. And here is the upper. So you do have a dual recoil spring guide rod assembly. It's actually pretty robust. And it all is captured, so you don't have to worry about all this flying around the room. Next up is the barrel. Go ahead and focus, there we go. You got your tiny little barrel there. And then you have the upper slide assembly. So, if you're wanting to clean this, I just use Rem oil. I have these Rem oil wipes, these are super convenient. So you just pull out one of the wipes, fold it in half, start with the lower. What I do is I just wipe everything down at first. Now I have not shot this gun yet, so this is all just the packing grease. But the main areas you want to get are the internals. Make sure you get that right here. I'll wipe all of this down too. Now you have your slide rails right here and right here and there and there. You want to make sure to get some oil and mose. Keep those nice and clean because if those get dirty with a lot of grit, you're going to wear the finish right off the gun in a heartbeat. So you see, and I haven't even shot this, so that gives you an idea how dirty it is just from the factory. So it's not a bad idea when you get a firearm to go ahead and clean it. Am I saying that I do that? Sometimes. Do I do it all the time? No. Depends. It's not going to kill you if you shoot it a couple times without cleaning it. And I just wipe everything down to get all that packing grease off. Next up, recoil spring guide rod. I'll just spin that inside the little rim oil wipe here. See that red coming right off. I'll wipe down the rest of that. Barrel, you see it's super, super oily from that packing grease. We'll go ahead and wipe that down. Make sure you get that feed ramp right there. Want to make sure that thing is clean as possible. If it's got a bunch of stuff on it or dirt or crud, that could cause problems when you're trying to shoot the firearm. So you get an idea, you see, I see my fingerprints on everything. Then you have the upper slide. I'll just give the outside of it a good wiping. Let's get all that nice and clean. 
the front, clean the back. Then on the inside is where I'll actually make sure to kind of scrub a little bit. Make sure that's nice and clean. And one of the big things is you have the inside of the rails here. That's where the bottom fits into the upper. I'll just make sure they get a little coating of that oil. So not to be much, like you see here, it's just whatever's on this paper I wipe in there. All right, now you get an idea. Now this is brand new without shooting it, but it's not the dirtiest I've seen, but it's still kind of dirty. Same with the magazines, you can give those a good wiping. It's probably not a bad idea. So the finish on them stays nice and bright and smooth. So you don't have any issues putting the magazines in or out. I'll do this with all my mags on occasion just to kind of clean them off. Because you'd be surprised how dirty the magazines get. Or maybe you won't if you've been shooting for a while. Like that one right there has, I don't know what on it. That must be the one they used to test it. Nice and clean. Clean. And those are the ones I loaded. Alright, so put it back together. You just reverse the steps. Oh, uh, let me actually talk about this. Here's the striker inside of here. So that's the actual striker and firing pin comes out here. The whole mechanism's inside there. If you wanted to clean that, let's say you got mud in there, you would just push this down. That's why they have that grippy texture on it. I'm not going to do that now because I generally don't clean those, but if you wanted to, that's how you can do it. First off, barrel, drop it in, only goes one way. You have the guide rod firing spring, all of that in here. Nice thing is everything will only fit one way. So that makes it very convenient. So silver forward, bronze backwards. And you'll see how it fits in that hole. Nice and flush. Then to put it back together, you're just gonna line up the guide rods or the guide rails and the holes all the way forward. Wanna get it past the back. Sometimes it's kind of a bear. What are you hanging up on? Alright, so make sure that that guide rod is pushed all the way down. Sometimes it doesn't want to do that. And it makes things a little difficult. And here, it's like I said, it makes things a little difficult. Let's try that again. Sometimes the smaller firearms can fight you a little bit when you take them apart. There we go. So what I did is just push down up here all it worked a second ago. There we go. So I just push down and back. That allows you to bring it all the way back. So you're going to bring it back, lock that slide, rotate the disassembly lever up, let go, confirm function, and you are good to go. And then I'll just wipe my handprints off everything. And that is that. Easy peasy. All right, so that is everything. All in all, this is a great little concealed carry pistol at an affordable price that I would highly suggest for everyone to get your hands on if you really wanted a nice concealed carry. And the nice thing is Smith & Wesson pistols you can still find out there nowadays in the wild. But that's all I have. Uh, if you like these, go ahead and give the channel or the video a like. And let me know what you down, think about them down in the comment section. Do you have issues? Are there problems that I don't know about? Do you have some cool upgrades and accessories? Let me know. I would definitely love to have a conversation about that in there. But that's it for today. I hope everyone out there has a great one. Stay safe. Keep your family safe. Stay on target with your goals. Don't let them fall past. And we'll talk to you again in the next video. Later, guys.